Hello, I'm Ilian St. Hilaire, and in this video, I want to talk about this water heater. It's a Ream Econet water heater. It has Wi Fi. Uh, it, this is a uh, heat pump water heater, so it will cool down the air in order to fill up or heat up the tank. And this has Wi Fi in it, so it's accessible from the cloud. You can remotely control it. Let's say you want to go in vacation mode or so on, you can control it from the app and from the cloud. If you have Home Assistant, you can also use the Econet integration to read values from the cloud and to uh, control this device. Now, the thing is, you will not have full access to everything. So, for example, in status, you have a bunch of values here, like the, the temperature of the top and bottom of the tank and so on. And so you don't get that through the cloud. And of course, you don't get that uh, in real time or near real time. So there is a way to access this water heater locally without using the cloud. And the way to do it is to use the standard port that's on the right here. It's a port that looks like a telephone jack. So if you have an old telephone cable, you can plug it in this port right there. And it's actually a serial port. It has two pins for the data and one pin for the ground. And so as long as you have one of these old uh, telephone cable, I have one with four pins uh, uh, on the connector, and this is uh, sufficient. The, um, the two data pins are the two central ones, and you have one on the, on the, the side for ground. So what I'm going to do is basically hook into this port to read all the data. And what I'm going to do is use the project called ESP Home Econet. This is a project that's on GitHub, and it requires ESP Home. So I bought myself a uh, ESP uh, little device. This is an Atom Light, and also the serial port adap adapter for it. And so I'm going to assemble this. We're going to need a USB Type-C cable, and of course, an old telephone cable that we're going to um, use to connect to this. And we're going to cut the other uh, part of the cable, connect it to the serial adapter here, and load the firmware on this device. So hopefully it will do well and we'll be able to read and control this device entirely from Home Assistant without going through the cloud. So here I have the USB cord, the telephone cord, the Atom and the serial kit. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and open this up for the first time. I'm gonna start with the Atom itself. See if I can do this easily there we go boom hard to believe that this has bluetooth wi-fi everything in one nice little box and so this is the serial adapter and this is actually doesn't contain much it's a little styrofoam and here we go and what you want to do is put the computer on the adapter and you're going to see that there's a, a place with five and a place, you know, five connectors here, four there, five here, four there. So you just mount it like that with the USB, uh, the USB connector uh, facing away. So that's it. And we have the uh, serial port right here, a couple screws for tightening the wires. And we have our uh, serial at, um, USB here. So all done, ready to go. Okay, so off camera, I was able to go to the website for uh, ESP Home Econet, and they have this picture that shows a telephone cable with the colors and then where to put the colors on the device. Now, I just happen to have a telephone cable that has exactly the same colors as the picture. And so this is very easy for me because then I can connect it, uh, connect mine just like the picture, exactly identical. So you have the green going to B, the red going to A, and the black going to G for ground. And so, of course, that's because I happen to have a cable that's exactly the same colors in the same order. And so you can see it here. But otherwise, you just figure out your colors and put them in the right place. And then I use a little uh, screwdriver and connected that right here and that's it very easy 
Now the next step is to put the firmware on this device. So now we're at the desktop and I want to basically at the computer and I want to go and flash my little Atom device here to with the right software. So I got the cable of course connected but I need to flash the software. So what we're going to do is go to my desktop computer and I am going to show you guys what I have going on. So first of all my browser I have um, let's go let's go back to home assistant here so this is my full home assistant main panel and if I go into settings uh, devices and go down here you'll see that I have the Ream Econet product one device and you'll see that this is the device I have um, I happen to have the Gen 4 version of the water heater, so it has a nice LCD panel, not as quite as efficient, doesn't have all the detectors here, so some of them are unknown. But anyway, uh, it works through the cloud perfectly, but we want to set it up locally. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am, uh, oh, by the way, I want to show you the uh, ESP not home Econet website on GitHub. So this is where I found this project. I ordered the M5 uh, stack here and uh, the, uh, the parts. So I ordered them separately. And then I connected using this old telephone wire to the serial port. And then we are going to do the software installation that is here. Before I do the software installation, what I want to do is just connect this to the USB device. So, uh, sorry, to the USB port. And the reason I wanna do that is I wanna be able to just check that this works correctly. So I'm gonna go to the, uh, I'm gonna go to the device manager. So this is my device manager for Windows. And you'll see that in the ports, COM and LPT, this I have COM1, COM3, COM and, um, and a printer port on this desktop. But what I expect is that when I connect this, I'll have one additional port, uh, one serial port. So what I'm going to do is grab the USB cable. And if you can see it here, I am going to go ahead and plug that in. Boom. And uh, oh, it lights up with a red light. And then I have plugged this before. Uh, the first time you plug it, it takes a little bit of time. It will uh, basically show as an unknown device for a while and until the drivers load. But I didn't need to download anything. I just uh, figured it out. And then you can see here on the screen, up right there, you can see on the screen that uh, the serial com port 4 just showed up and so that's a good sign that this device is uh, working okay now that we got the device uh, set up and ready to go the next thing to do is to get the esp ohm integration into uh, home assistant so i'm going to go to settings going to go to add-ons and then click on the add-on store i'm going to search for esp home and I'm just gonna take, I guess a normal one. Uh, there it goes, not the dev, not the beta, just a normal one. And so, uh, and then you click install. That's it. That will bring the new ESP Home uh, integration into your Home Assistant, where I can, there we go. So uh, show in sidebar, I'm gonna say yes. Auto update, in my case, I'm gonna say yes and I'm going to say start. There it goes. Perfect. So now I have the ESP home panel on the left side. So I'm going to click on that. And now I have this test device. I think I, think I did this on, in the past. So I'm going to delete this because I had just tried this a long time ago and I don't need. OK, so I'm going to click new device. And so a new device needs to be connected over USB. And so I'm going to say continue. And so how do I name it? I'm going to say hot water heater and say next. It's um, in my case, it's a uh, I clicked on the uh, I wanted to take a look at the uh, at what type of processor this is. So this is the one I bought the Atom Light. And it says that it's powered by an ESP32 Pico chip. So hopefully that means that here 
I can just select ESP32. Um, that's all I have. Okay. And I'll say, and then it says you can install the configuration on your device. Once your device is installed, da da da. And there's some kind of encryption key that I copied. Not sure what I need this for, but I'm going to paste it right over here into a separate file and keep that. So I'm not exactly sure why I need that, but I'm going to save it for next time. Okay, so install, wirelessly, plug manually, and so on. Actually, I want to cancel this and I want to edit the device. There it goes. So this is the configuration uh, of the device right now. And I have a, a fallback password that it created for me and so on and so forth. So this is nice, but uh, this is not what I want. What I want to do is go back to GitHub and it tells you here that there is an example ESP32. So that's what I want. I'm going to click that. And this is what I want to copy. So I'm going to copy this and I'm just going to paste it right over here. Poof, pasted. Um, maybe I shouldn't enable fallback hotspot. Uh, let's see, captive portal. Maybe I should keep some things like Wi-Fi. I want to keep the fallback hotspot. So I'm going to keep this and put that here so that if, if it doesn't connect, it, it falls back to, doing the, to this, which is good. Then the logger is okay. Um, ESP home. I don't think I need this. Okay. So I think that's all I need. Um, OTA, uh, encryption, enable is well we'll put that in here i wonder i just wonder how much i need of this stuff i think esp home this this is duplicate so i don't need that and then for wi-fi this is duplicate captive portal i don't need it and that's it substitutions okay i think that would be okay and then i need to put my wi-fi password so i'm going to save this and Wi-Fi, SSID, and password. I need to put my password at the right place. ESP32, it's giving me an error here. Uh, okay, well, I don't know what that is. So, we'll... Uh, okay, so right in this situation, um, the, uh, the Wi-Fi username and password, I've already set them up. I've, I've this var value, Wi-Fi SSID and Wi-Fi password. You can exit, go on secrets here, click on this, set up your Wi-Fi username and password, and then uh, that's good. And then I happen to have the heat pump water heater, so this is the correct one. I'm not gonna use any of these other ones, so I can remove that. There we go. And I think that's it. Um, password. Okay. If we have a module such as that, I don't think I need that. If you want to expose specific sensors, I don't need that. So I'm going to remove all this. And I think I'm okay. So I'm going to save. And then I'm going to click install. And plug into your computer running the dashboard, plug into this computer via USB. So this is the one I want. But the problem is Firefox doesn't support the serial port um, to the web. So I'm going to go back, cancel this, and I'm going to open up Chrome. Okay, because Chrome actually supports this uh, serial business stuff. So advanced, proceed. Okay, I'm going to log in. Um, okay, whoops. Hopefully. There it goes. Okay, so I logged in. And now I have my uh, device here. I'm going to click and say install. Plug into this computer. And you noticed before 
that serial comp four is the new device that it showed up here. So try again. So I'm going to pick com four and say connect. And do 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 do. Failed to, to prepare configuration, see what's wrong. And indeed, uh, ASP32 was not correct on line one and also on line nine. Find another document. But found this, oh yeah, I found this in this other document. So what I need to do is remove this entirely. And the reason I need to remove this, I'm gonna remove the logging too. The remove, and I need to remove that because um, that part is already found in, in this document here. So that's good. Okay, so I'm gonna hit save. Okay, so I have uh, my file edited here. Everything is fine. So now the next step is to download it onto the device and I'm gonna use Chrome for this. And the first thing I'm going to do is say down install and I'm just going to say manual download. And the reason I'm going to do that is just to make sure that it compiles correctly. So compiling, compiling, it's linking here, some kind of uh, elf thing and boom. And then I'll say modern format and it downloaded it correctly. I have the dot bin file here. Good. So I'm going to close this device manager. See COM4, port four is here. So now I'm going to go install, plug on this computer, four, connect. Preparing installation. So it's probably compiling here. There it goes. It's installing. Oh, ho. so now it's loading it. It's loading the firmware onto this device. Now, again, I'm a Firefox user usually, but you will need Edge or Chrome um, in order to do the serial port uh, directly from the browser trick uh, because Firefox doesn't support it, which is okay. Should take two minutes. Now, as soon as this firmware is loaded, what I'm gonna expect it to happen is that it, the device is gonna connect to my Wi-Fi, and then I should see the, um, I should see Home Assistant being able to talk directly to the device. And so this should turn green. So now configuration installed, good. And so now, hopefully the device will connect to my Wi-Fi. Oh, there's a notification. New device discovered, check it out. I can dismiss it because it's already online. Boom, that worked, I can't believe it. It totally, totally worked. Okay, so I should be able to go into settings. I'll, actually, I'll go back to, uh, I'll go back to Firefox here. So I'll go back to settings, devices, and look at that, water heater, ESP home, configure. Do you want to add? Yes, submit. Boom, area, uh, garage, finish. And there we go. That's all I have, all I need. So let's see, where is it? Uh, ESP home, one device, boom. And it has the fan speed, hot water, power, all these detector. And of course, right now it's uh, beep on alarm. So there's all these tricks here. So now the next part is to go and connect this device to the water heater and see if it works. I'll be right back. Okay, so we're back in the garage and I have the Atom here with the phone plug. I have a USB cord and yeah, ready to plug it in. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and plug this in right here. And then the other side, I'm going to plug to a normal wall plug, and this will connect to Wi-Fi, and hopefully it will work perfectly. 
So we'll see what happens. Okay, so I just went and plugged it in and guess what? We're starting to see uh, information. We're seeing the firmware, we're seeing the hardware version, the fan speed is currently off, the power being used, and various things. So it's starting to work. Up-to-date firmware, uh, ESP Home, various alerts. We have the temperatures, lower tank, ambient temperature, and so on and so forth. Suction temperature, Wi-Fi signal. Yeah, so guess what? It's working. So the next step here is I'm going to take a look at making graphs out of these different values and adding them to, um, to uh, Home Assistant. Okay, one thing I want to mention is that now that I plugged it in uh, with the updated firmware, the light on this thing no longer turns on. And so this is normal. The, um, uh, once you update the firmware, the, normally the default firmware, every time you tap it, changes color on the light. But here, there's, once you get the new firmware in, it doesn't do the light thing anymore. Like I can click the button and it doesn't do anything. But that's okay. Uh, it still works fine. So another thing I just discovered is that there's this control here uh, for water heater. And you can click on it and you can see the current uh, mode. Uh, it's currently set to heat pump. I can change it to whatever. I can change it to vacation right here. My gosh, and it has the correct uh, temperatures and the current temperature of the tank. So what I can do is, uh, let's see, it's called a water heater. So I can go up here. I'm going to go ahead and edit my dashboard and edit. And I'm going to add here water heater. Perfect. Look at that. It's right there. And I'm going to put it a little higher. Um, right between the uh, hot water uh, recirculation pump and the uh, mow and flow. Perfect. So I'm going to hit save here. Done. And look at that. I have the water heater control right here. It's wonderful. And it's giving me all this information and stuff. I love it. So that's it. Uh, how to connect your uh, water heater locally to uh, Home Assistant. I love it. Thank you very much. Have a great day.